Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. This program is brought to you by Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service, one of America's fastest growing RV dealerships. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's Saturday night. Bob, <laughs> not Saturday Night Live. You know, I think there might be some of our uh, regular loyal viewers that think that this is Wednesday night and they either either got two days back or they lost five days. But well, they'll 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 show up. Yep. Unfortunately, it is a time when there's necessity for a Saturday night special. And um, you know what? Saturday night specials in Texas are almost synonymous. So when, when you say Saturday night special, you're talking about Chris Doherty? Yeah, well, you know what? Um, Chris is usually one of our, our <laughs> Wednesday night staples as opposed to Saturday night specials. But um, we do want to welcome Chris Doherty, who's the other familiar face that you see up there on the four corners. Um, I don't know what, Bob, that fourth picture there that you've got, I don't know if you want to put, put the regular logo up there. There you but, go. There we go. So, Chris, the, the reason we're coming to you folks live on a Saturday night is because you'd have to be locked in a um, soundproof room to not realize the devastation that is taking place with our RVing friends in the great state of Texas. And although this show says RVing in New England, I guess really we should call it RVing from New England because we're probably not going to talk about New England at all tonight. But New England has so many connections with um, the entire United States. But we have so many friends in Texas that have been communicating with us over the last few days that we thought that it was important to, uh, to do a show about Texas. And uh, who better to contact with information about potential maintenance issues than our friend Chris Doherty, one of the founders of the newly minted, Bob, take it from here, uh, it did RV RV enthusiast magazine, and I just I think I just downloaded. I did <laughs> happen to have a picture of the magazine. Look at that! There so Chris, Chris is part of nice the nice job. Engine. <laughs> so tell us, uh, you're off and running, right? We are off and running. First issue is out and uh, available on our website, and uh, so we've had a, a couple little tech hiccups, but uh, we're getting there. And uh, we've had a lot of interest, uh, both from uh, consumers that have found us through our organic marketing uh, and the industry, for sure. And so we've been very blessed that way. We have uh, some great support behind us and a great team. And uh, we're, we're working on, uh, we have this first issue out and we're working on the future. Right. And Bob, we should also tell our viewers that in addition to talking with Chris tonight with specific questions, and we can even allow our audience to ask him specific questions Absolutely. Um, about some of the eventualities, the new eventualities that our Texas RV friends are finding out is that we do have three excellent interviews with people in Texas with their feet on the ground, their boots on the ground in Texas right now that um, are going to tell us exactly what's going on down there from a first person perspective. So um, well, let's get a first person perspective. What were your thoughts, Chris, when you, you started to see the damage and the devastation that snowbirds don't usually expect when they go to Texas in the winter. So from a technical standpoint, your specialty, <clears throat> your first impressions. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's a big piece of it. Uh, when I was a full timer, I spent a lot of time up in upstate New York. Uh, and so I understand what it's like to put an RV through winter conditions. And let's face it, when you're an RVer, and you're a snowbird, what do you want to do? You want to get out of the uh, winter weather and get to some place where it isn't going to freeze. And, uh, you know, historically, most RVs are not set up for winter conditions. So, uh, you know, this past week, we've had winter storm warnings from the Mexican border in Texas to the Canadian border in Maine. Uh, with uh, just really unbelievable conditions. And we were far warmer here in New England than they were in Texas. Yep. So, uh, you know, that puts people in a hell of a bind. 
when they're down there. Uh, and so there's a, and, and we were getting a lot of, uh, you know, inquiries and emails and, and, and Jim Mack, our, our uh, social media guy was seeing a lot of things on Facebook about people just didn't know how to deal with it. You know, they, they had never thought of putting their RV through those kinds of conditions. And so, uh, we put out a video earlier this week and, of course, this one here, too, to give some advice and answer some questions about how you get through it. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, so it's not as though we're not used to the cold conditions up here in New England. Certainly we are. And we have RVers up here who may want to take their RVs out in cold weather. Uh, but what they're putting up with down there is something very different. They hadn't intended on it. They weren't planning on it. So. How do you get through it and uh, come out in one piece yeah. on the other side? Yeah. And Chris, one of the issues I think that one of the discussions that is going to rear, I don't know if it's, it's ugly, but it's really going to be talked about in the next few months is um, should your RV have a diesel generator or a gas generator? Because they're, excuse me, propane or gas, gas meaning gas or diesel versus propane. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what? Uh, in this situation, we talk to people. In fact, you're going to hear about it very, very shortly tonight. Um, where a gent, where a gentleman who was pulling a fifth wheel, or as he says, a grand design fifth wheel, mm -hmm. um, um, his his diesel fuel in his pickup truck gelled up, mm -hmm. um, and then there are other people that have found that they can't get propane for the uh, generator or or any of the units inside it. Um, prior to this, what was the argument about pro generator, uh, pro diesel generator versus pro propane generator? How do you how do you discuss that? Well, when you're looking at, at generators, uh, you know, generally you're looking at gas gasoline power generators, uh, and and uh, those some of those are are also propane. Uh, power generators, and then you have diesels. Uh, the diesel generators are generally built into motorhomes, so uh, you know it's it it's a, a little different thing. Uh, when you're talking about towables, uh, you generally you're talking about propane versus uh, a, a gasoline uh, portable. Some toy haulers will have uh, two fuel tanks on them, one for uh, gasoline for your toys, and the other gasoline tank uh, for the generator. So when you're, you know, when you're comparing apples to oranges, a propane generator is generally rated a little bit less in capacity uh, than its uh, gasoline counterpart. Uh, but uh, as a rule, it's a matter of uh, convenience, which type of generator you're going to have. So if you're a, uh, you have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel or whatever, if you have a, uh, if you have a fifth wheel with a built-in generator, most of the time it's going to be propane, unless it's a toy hauler. And so you're kind of stuck there with having to refill your propane and to, you know, to keep that going. And the more load you have on the generator, the more propane you're going to go through. Yep. Uh, and, and that's, that's the, the tough part of that, but you do have to keep the propane, uh, you know, filled, filled and, and keep swapping your cylinders yep. out. Uh, to keep that going. All right, let's... Uh, if you are dealing with a Class A motorhome, you've got a diesel or a gasoline power generator. It's coming off of the fuel tank on the coach. Uh, if your fuel tank is full, you're going to have a decent amount of time on the generator uh, before you're going to have to refill. Uh, generally, those come from a separate, uh, or those use a separate um, uh, uh, port on the uh, fuel tank. And uh, it will, the, uh, the pickup uh, tube on it will uh, run until you get to about a quarter tank of fuel. And then, and then it will yeah. stall the generator so that you don't have, uh, you know, so that you're not basically being yeah. stuck. Okay. Yeah. Bob? Let's hold that conversation. We're going to go, well, I want to recognize, we got Jerry Plant and Scott and Jim Roy from up in Maine. And Jerry says, if he had gone south this winter, it would have been to South Texas. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, lucky you are, Jerry. Uh, you, you get to put up with Jerry. You get to put up with the cold here versus down in Texas. So it costs day, you a yeah. lot less money for the same cold. Yes, I spend all the money to be just as cold. John, what do you got for the first video? So, with this gentleman, his name is Charles Peel, 
and he is um, stuck at the Texas Oklahoma border in an RV park called um, Texoma RV Park. And um, he was a gentleman that I spoke to just a couple of days ago and has a brand new grand design unit and uh, has a generator in it. And uh, just listen to him as Bob plays this. Um, he's been full timing for two years, so he's still a rookie, but um, let's listen to what he has to say. Hey everybody, you know, it's no secret that uh, our friends in the great state of Texas are going through some challenges with the weather. Actually, they're going through the weather that we get in the Northeast all year long, but you know what, we're prepared for it. We've got the proper snow making equipment, snow clearing equipment, snow making too, if you wanna go skiing. And um, we've also got properly insulated buildings, et cetera. But the fact is some of our friends in Florida uh, and not in Florida, in Texas are experiencing some difficulties. And we have um, a gentleman with us right now. His name is Charles Peel. Charles, um, welcome. And tell us a little bit about where you're located and the environment that you're in right now. Right now we're located in Pottsboro, Texas on the border of Oklahoma and Texas, right off the Lake Texoma Lake. Okay. Things aren't, so, a lot so, of people do not have power. We got over a foot of snow. Okay, so normally this time of year there, is there any snow at all? Not not even close. Not even close. So you've probably got people, if, if you, you said you were a native Texan from the, from the Dallas area, um, snow is not your friend, is it? Not at all. Okay, so I, I guess the big issue is heat and uh, your capability to get propane or diesel, et cetera, et cetera. Describe the situation down there. I know you said you had gone out to try to get some propane. Um, describe the scenario at the propane filling stations. The stations are bad. You go up there and I've heard there's 30, 40 people in line and people are getting up to the tanks and the places are closing down on them or they're running out of propane. Hmm. It's not so, good. Um, have you seen any situations where people have lost their temper? Lost their camper? No, their temper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are right now. They're mad, especially with the power shutdowns. They were supposed to do it as a rolling type thing. There's been people without power for 36, 48 hours. Hmm. Now, you had mentioned that you have a grand design unit with a generator built in. and yes. um, um, But there are some people that you know there that have outside generators. And, and I know that you had uh, seen some people that haven't been able to get heat for a couple of days. Um, Most people up here do not have generators on their RV where we're at. A lot, some of the motor coaches, if they didn't prepare their diesel, they've gelled up and not able to use their heat in their motor coaches either. Okay. And this is, was there any warning, Charles, that this was going to be the, to this extreme? If I'd have known, I'd be sitting in Florida right now. Okay. You would have just hightailed it, got out and uh, driven across I-10 over there, huh? It's crazy because we got friends that have left here that went down to Kerrville and all the ice storms have left them kind of stray. They thought they're going to get out of it. Mm. How about any um, medical situations where people that may need CPAP machines or other types of CPAP um, machine? I'm not even using it right now. Okay, uh, and, and you're able to be able to not use it. Yeah, I've had a couple of heart attacks or something like I'd like to use to get the extra air and all, but. Okay. It had okay. Um, what, what is your town saying? Uh, what, what are the people saying in town as far as when they would plan to restore power, sir? Everyone, we've got some of the power came on up here, but we're kind of afraid because it shuts off at the middle of the night and sometimes it doesn't come back on. So we've left the generator running to assure that we've had, we're keeping it warm in here. Mm. So the first morning we woke up, our generator didn't kick on. We're in here for three hours, woke up at five o'clock in the morning, freezing. Yep. So by freezing, um, give us an idea of the temperatures down there in the wind chill. Wind chill yesterday got down to like negative 12. Negative 12. That's Fahrenheit. Yeah. Well, with the wind chill. So yesterday when it first opened up, it was negative one, negative one straight across the board. The morning before it was negative 12 wind chill. Okay. 
And I know every time I've been to Texas, if it got to 32, it became headline news. So now it's 30 degrees colder. Um, Mm -hmm. Have you seen situations where, uh, and again, you're in a RV resort, so everybody's there permanently. It's not like it's a campground, right, sir? Yeah, the people come and go here. Oh, they do. Okay. So is it a situation where you've had to see any people move in with somebody else just to make it through the night? Uh, has we've any of that people, sharing been going we on? Offer, we offered a couple of people that, like the young guy that helps work up here, but everybody seems to be doing okay. Mm-hmm. Some people just packed up and left. Just, and if they left, where would they go? Hotel or somewhere. I'm oh, not sure okay. if they got, if they got family further away. They've gone to go into a bigger house. Okay. Has food become an issue getting to food stores or uh, are the food stores out of food? Have you heard anything like that? Not a lot. We prepared before this, but I've seen where the power is going. A lot of grocery stores are just stacking their meat up outside to get rid of it. There's people actually going to the grocery stores, grabbing that meat that's been stuck outside because it's freezing. It's not going to go bad. Oh, because there's no power inside. Inside the grocery stores. They're having to pull the meats out. So they don't go bad and they're sticking them out, not sticking them in the dumpsters, but step piling it up outside and people are actually going by picking stuff up like that since it's still frozen. Okay. Have you, have you ever seen anything like this in your life? Not at all. And I'm presuming you don't want to see it last much longer, but what is, what are the forecasts down there, Charles? We're not sure. My truck jailed up the other day because my big diesel, because I wasn't prepared for this. And I've got to leave it. I left stranded, so I can't get it probably till this weekend, hopefully. It, hopefully this weekend, it's going to get up into the 40s, Sunday or Monday, somewhere like that. Hopefully some of this stuff will be deleting. So you've got at least two or three more days of this? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Yes. Okay. So we want to wish you the best. I know that if you're, if you're an RV or you've been RVing full-time for two years now, um, I'm sure that you found the RV, other RVers are always uh, welcome to, um, I mean, they always are very helpful in asking you if there's anything you need. Have you, have you found that to be the case? Yeah, because I can't get around too good. My neighbor, he's from Michigan, that's behind me. And he's been doing a lot of running around for me, helping me get some things done. About getting me fuel back over here. My brother-in-law's done the same thing. Good, good. Well, we certainly want to wish you the best. And um, you know what, uh, at least you're in an RV park in an area where you're, you're not stuck on the side of a highway or a rest area or anything like those, those things there so that when the power does return, you'll be one of the first to get yeah, it back. How yeah, bad it has been up here seeing that wreck in Fort Worth last week. It's yeah, been I sad. saw that on TV. It's been sad. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want to say to anybody out there? If you run into this problem, make sure you're in a Grand Design Momentum 376. (laughs) (laughs) And prepared for it. And prepared. So with that being said, we want to thank Charles Peel, who joins us from Texoma, Texoma RV Resort on the Texas-Oklahoma line. And um, want to wish you the best and stay safe, my friend. I appreciate it. Same to you. Thank you so much. There you go. Did you see what he said about taking the meat outside and leaving it outside because it's cold out there with no refrigeration <laughs> inside? I, I got the impression they weren't paying for it either. Yeah, no. Yeah, I kind of get that feel. He, he didn't quite come out and say it, but. Uh, yeah. So, so just to be clear, when I uh, was a full timer in upstate New York, I used to have a thermometer that recorded the lowest in highest temperatures, you've seen those, you know, Oregon Scientific, whatever. The lowest I ever got was 24 below. And I mean, that was like my all time record. I didn't uh, freeze up, but boy, I was using a lot of energy at that point. And it was something I had a lot of time to prepare for. And I had a lot of propane. Uh, you know, I had a, oh, yeah. uh, a 200 pound cylinder outside and the whole thing. Uh, these people are having to deal with this with no preparation and no extra anything uh, to make that happen. And, and no history of it. Extraordinary. It, there's no history of it. So that when you say, you know, do you win, you know, winterize, what does it mean to a Texan? It, 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 
It means just, you know what, get an extra sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. it, it well, doesn't... The other thing is that I don't know if I heard him wrong, but did he say his truck was stranded on the road? Right. The oh. diesel. The diesel yeah. yelled up. He said, I'm stranded. Somebody had, to get him, somebody had to get him back to the campground. Right. 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 And he said, yeah. you know, he's had a couple of heart attacks, so he's, he's kind of immobile. And he said, my neighbor from Michigan, interestingly, a state that's used to dealing with bad weather, uh, has been running around for him. So, you know, yeah. Chris, when it thaws, and I think I think today or tomorrow it's finally going to thaw. It's, in it's there now, yeah. Are there going to be hidden things that um, have been damaged that the that the RV owners are not going to know about until it, it thaws even more? Well, the, it potentially yes. Uh, it, it depends on how warm they were able to keep keep the RV. Uh, if uh, plumbing and so forth froze up and froze solidly, which it certainly looked like. Our friends at the Weather Channel were looking at homes the other day uh, where the swimming pools were frozen solid. They were down in the Dallas area. Uh, you know, all the uh, pumps, the filters, everything. Uh, you know, I remember them walking around and looking at that sort of thing. The, of course, the plumbing systems on RVs are a lot smaller than that. So if they have managed to freeze those up? Could they have problems? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's uh, That's probably the main issue that most RVers will uh, will find. Uh, you know, the diesel motorhomes with the and, and diesel trucks with the gelling issue, once it warms up, that usually, uh, you know, goes away. It's not as big an issue, but uh, certainly the, the frozen plumbing is, is a problem. Well, you know, I, I talked to Phil Elam, Yesterday, Bill is my equivalent. He runs the Texas RV Association, and he's been in Texas his entire life and, and has never seen anything like it. And he's having trouble getting in touch with the dealers themselves. And one of the things that we talked about is, you know, the, these units weren't winterized in Texas. And you take somebody like Motorhome Specialist or some of these really large oh, dealers, the I mean, they had to try to get out there to – try to winterize them instantly when once they saw the forecast. So I wonder how many RVs are going to be in Texas that when all this stuff thaws out uh, and somebody had posted on one of the social forums, don't even think about buying something in Texas unless you run water through the whole system. Well, well and you know what, Bob? That's, Chris, would you agree that's going to be an issue with um, with units, you know, six months from now that nobody knows that they were through that and uh, they're going to look clean but everything that is damaged is hidden behind walls. So certainly from a private sale standpoint, you're going to have to think about that a little bit. Uh, dealers on the free, on the flip side of that, uh, you know, they do a pre-delivery inspection uh, to look at, and, and that's including testing all the plumbing systems, both the pressurized plumbing and the waste plumbing and that type of thing. Uh, so, uh, when you buy an RV from a dealer, they're going to go through that. And if there's any problems, they'll certainly fix it. Uh, but yes, to your point, uh, RVs that, uh, ship during the summertime and that ship to, uh, Southern States don't normally get winterized. And so after they've been through their factory testing, so yeah, um, theoretically those could freeze up to some extent. Uh, you know, it's just, it's going to be on a case by case basis, but if yep. you're buying from a dealer, normally it goes through the shop, does the PDI. If there's any problems, they'll fix it. Yeah. And, you know, we know from, uh, history that when there's a natural disaster, like a tornado or a flood or, you know, a blizzard, every RV dealer sells out of generators within 24 hours and there, you cannot find a generator anywhere in Texas. In fact, there was a story this morning that, uh, Camping World shipped 500 generators down there for emergency use and and they've done that in the past where they, they go to their stores and mm -hmm. excess inventory and, and ship it down there uh, i did talk to terry cooper this morning from uh, national rv training academy uh, we do have a comment. mary lou north says i'm glad we're in florida but it's been chilly in the area in north central where they are our good friends in port Ar i think she means arkansas maybe uh yeah. Had an awful time. They've been full time for six years, and they're from the northeast, so they prepared as best they could. No water was hard. 
Uh, Jerry Plant says, that's why I recommend buyers hold something back if I inspect an RV that uh, winterized. Inspect an RV. There's, oh, that's winterized. Okay. That's winterized. Yeah. Let's take a look uh, at Ter Terry Cooper, who survived actually a little bit better than what uh, I thought a lot of people would uh, would do given the damage down there. So I'm going to mute two guys. We're going to go full green. Mute that, mute that. All right, everybody, we are delighted in the middle of our show to have an appearance by Terry Cooper, better known as the Texas RV professor and probably better known as Cooper in the industry. And Terry, I, I want to thank you for you know taking time to talk to us tonight about the conditions in Texas. You, you're right on the front line there. How did it come upon you and how did you respond to it? Well, you know, long stories, a lot of things, a lot of stories feeding in. You know, we'd had the girl campers. We were hosting them. And they, I mean, they saw that store coming. And so most of them were able to leave like the Saturday night before the storm hit like Sunday evening. We had, a, I think we had four of the ladies stay over with us because they said, you know, we don't have any place to go. So we'll hunker down here with us. And so everything started kind of happening Saturday night, early Sunday morning. And, you know, I feel guilty sometimes talking about this because we had it so good compared to so many others. Uh, you know, we just, we had, you know, a lot of people that pulled together. And when things started happening, we just told the, the RVers, because we had a lot of students here that were taking classes, I said, just go ahead and bring on water, unhook your water hoses and your sewer hoses, and just make sure you got plenty of propane. And that's how most of them made it, is through what they had in their RV. Well, let's, let, let's make sure people know that you're, you are an associate member, <clears throat> excuse me, of NERVDA, and you run the National RV Training Academy. So tell us a little bit about the Academy. And I know you, I forgot that you had, had you were finishing up on the Girl Camper Weekend uh, down there, but tell us about the Academy and, and why you were able to handle a lot of the things that some people would not be able to handle in their home circumstance. Well, about three and a half years ago, we bought the Texan RV park and, and we bought it not just to have an RV park, but we bought it so we'd have a place for people to come and go to school and have a place to stay because that's one of the problems we have. There's some other schools across the country, but the problem they have in certain seasons, you can't find an RV site, you know, without having to drive a long ways or sleep in your own truck, which I've heard some of them had to do. So we bought the park. And then we built the Big Red Schoolhouse. That's where we have, that's where we home base the National RV Training Academy. And it's a 15,000 square foot training facility, service bays, you know, everything you need to train with. And we have a solar program. We have a generator program. We have a technician, a mobile technician program. We also have an RV inspector. So that's what we do here. And so when this storm hit, you know, it's, we, we actually had a full set of classes going on. We had the girl campers and then we had a group of people that were finishing up, um, they had just finished up furnaces and water heaters. So how appropriate was that, right? Because <laughs> that's what some of them did. Yeah. I was very pleased with some of these students. They fanned out and we had some individuals that were having furnace problems and these students jumped right in and took care of things. And that's, that's kind of encouraging to see. Well, and you also had equipment uh, to deal with the leaky pipes, the broken pipes, the uh, electricity, like you say, you had, tell, tell, tell again the story about uh, what you did with the generators, because you did have a full class down there, and they, they were only we there for a week, and you push a lot of information into these, you know, future technicians, <laughs> so. Well, you know, there's nothing like taking the classroom outside, and we, we kind of laughed about it. After it was all said and done, and we were sitting around drinking coffee, we were kind of laughing, so, you know, you couldn't have asked for a better proof that the student knew what he was doing or she were doing because uh, we had just finished up a, a generator class and so we took all those generators and we were using them out in the park at different locations. Um, some of the folks had generators on board their rig so they were running those and then we had um, cabins and cottages because we bought some RV uh, what we would call park models and then we also have some smaller units that are cabins and a lot of them of course didn't have holding tanks and they certainly if we lost power we had to back them up so that's what we did was just move the generators out there we had to move um, a generator hook up to the main office because our telephones are tied into the to the internet so people calling us couldn't get a hold of us because our internet was down because of the, the system uh, we've got fiber optics coming in so 
we went ahead and run a generator over there and, and run some cords into the window and, and fired up the uh, the internet so that way they, everybody could have their movies you know so that just tells you how bad it really was and um, of course then we had you know we had folks manning the telephones just like they normally do taking reservations and believe it or not we got a lot of phone calls from the local community looking for propane and you know, we had a 500 gallon holding tank and we filled that thing up three times already and wow. we're going to be filling it up the fourth time probably tomorrow yeah Communities think, buying propane and all the all the people in the park are buying propane. I, I think I would have been drinking something stronger than coffee, Terry. <laughs> well, <laughs> I won't tell you, okay? How, now, how were the neighboring roads and stuff? So you, you weren't in the middle of the real bad stuff, but could people get around, get to the no. shopping centers or the food stores? No? No. Um, we're, we're on a major highway. It's two lanes going in each direction. It's a, a direct road between Dallas and Tyler. And there was no traffic on that road. The, the counties around here, they're not staffed with snow plows and sand spreaders or anything like that. You know, it's they're salt spreaders. They just, we didn't have it. It wasn't until yesterday. So here we are, what, four days into this. Finally, I saw a road grader come down the road and that poor guy had to be cold because that cab was open. So, <laughs> okay. you know, that had to be bad. That, that's hardcore yeah. guy out there. But he, that's what they were doing. They plowing the roads. But what's happened was is, is really our biggest culprit was is the power would come on and it would go off. And the first day or so, I mean, we'd have power for 15 minutes and then we'd be off an hour or two hours. And so that got kind of critical. And that's what pushed us to get those generators in place pretty quick. Well, I appreciate the... Uh the comments and you coming on. Tell me though, do you think this is a, and I don't want you to be you know, a weatherman, but is it really a once in a lifetime thing? Uh, I'm reading stories that the insurance claims are going to be surpassing Hurricane Harvey in 2017. They could, they could exceed $20 billion. Is it really a once in a lifetime thing or do you now start planning and, and building the backup plan in case it happens again. You know, Bob, I, I, I truly believe we'll see more and more of this. We've seen some really weird weather and, and who knows, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that's, that people forecast, but long and short of it, we're gonna see some weird stuff. And so oddly enough, uh, back in the summer, I was able to purchase two 30 kW generators. DFW was pulling them out of, DFW airport was pulling them out of service out of a, a I guess it was a parking lot or something. And so they were just upgrading them and they had very low hours on them. And so I bought them at an auction and I was gonna put them in, in business because I thought come summer, we could use those as backup because last summer we had some problems with the grid and we were two days without power. So my plan was, you know, when things warmed up this spring, we would go ahead and put those generators in because you're right, if you don't prepare, it's, it's very obvious there's gonna be some problems. I mean, right now there are no restaurants open in this area and there's no grocery stores open. That's Walmart, a lot of little Brookshire brothers. Um, and, and I don't know if you guys, do you have Brahms ice cream? No, no, no. It's, a, it's an ice cream, it, it's owned by family and they have a dairy and everything, but there for a while that was the place to go shopping because Brahms had milk and they had you know <laughs> potato chips and bread and hot dogs and, but I understand they're out now. How about the RVs themselves? Were there any really serious issues with the RVs or were they able to uh, take your guidance and get them repaired and keep them going? You know, it's really strange. The folks that, that are in the industry as work campers or maybe full timers, they, they adapted better. The folks that we had the most issues with were the folks what we would call I'm gonna use the term squatters because they're monthlies. They stay here, this is their home. I mean, we have one lady who's a, a nurse and so she lives in an RV. Well, she's stuck at the hospital and her RV is, you know, lost power and run out of propane and all these other issues. So those are the ones we had the biggest issue with. But the, yep. the typical RVer, I think they're picking up real quick that that was the reason why they bought the RVs because they wanted to be able to have that city on wheels. Yep, and they get that great experience. Well, Terry, I'm going to let you get back to work and uh, your generators and your fixing the water <laughs> yeah. pipes and yes. roads and what have you. But uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight as we kind of take a look at Texas and hope that uh, everything gets uh, back to normal there as quickly as possible. Well, Bob, I appreciate the reach out. Hey, thanks for the break. It was kind of nice to get away from the water league. So <laughs> we'll see you later, okay? Right, take care. <laughs>
you know, they don't have snow plows down there. And you, you, you put on the national news and you see them plowing snows with road graders, mm -hmm. which, you know, can probably rip up the road as much as anything. Uh, but that you know what? for an emergency circumstance, it, it gets the ice and snow off the road. But um, you, you just hear these circumstances, no food. Yeah. And, and if there was food, there's no way to get to it because the roads ain't plowed. Right. When I, when I was a full timer, I was I, and I was still working in the fire service. I had taken some time off and I, I was going to go down to Florida. And so I took my motor home down. I got as far as uh, uh, Carmel Church, Virginia, to the Flying J, and a nor'easter hit. And we had 26 inches of snow, and I was there for two and a half days. And, uh, you know, we kind of made a, a party out of it, but there's a guy next to me from upstate New York who's got this old uh, uh, classy motor home, doesn't have a generator or anything, plugged him into me, and we just kind of made a community out of it. But you weren't going anywhere. So and then we finally did the the interstate was a mess. There's truckers all over the there's trucks all over the place in the in the median off the side of the road. Everything else was like driving on a washboard. Yeah, and so, uh, it was until we got I got down to the Carolinas until it clear cleared up. Jerry Jerry's got an astute observation. He says, "I bet the Florida Keys will be crowded next winter." <laughs> I, bet I bet they're already sold out, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Chris, you just brought up uh, being stalled at a uh, flying jade. Did you have to eat food out of that uh, golden skillet or iron? The time I did. Yeah, food? yeah. They had they had the buffet back then. See, yeah. now they're all Denny's and stuff. But yeah, yeah. I've heard that they should have called them an iron stomach. Buffet. Yeah, there were better options, but uh, you know, certainly nobody misses those. But uh, a couple yeah. times I went in, I went in a couple of those. those <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Flying J restaurants, and I said, "Oh man, you got to really be stuck on the road for a long time to eat that food." That's it. Uh, but you know what? Back in the day, they had phone connections at the booths, so you could take your laptop in there and plug it in uh, and get on the internet. Yeah. So that was worth the, the right, yeah. that was worth That's the price right. you, of admission and, and eating the mystery meat. Even, right. even if you paid for it, not eating food, right. <laughs> hey, Jerry, Lou, Jerry Lou corrected me. It's Port Aransas in Texas on the Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast. Don Haas just joined. Have you been on, Don? Don is actually a work camper at the Texan RV Ranch. So, uh, hey, guys, I'm going to get something stronger. I'm with you, uh, Don, but... Uh, I don't think he's talking about seltzer water versus regular water either. Tell us, uh, tell us how your situation went. And Mary Lou says, "Girl Camper is a great group. They are. Were, uh, were you down there in Texas, Mary Lou, by any chance for the uh, the what do they call it the Valentine's Day? No, so she's, she's in Florida. Oh, oh that's right. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me let me do the commercial here. We're running uh, behind on our commercial. Got to get that commercial in. Got to get the commercial in. They pay. We'll be back with more. What? We'll be back with more right after this word from our sponsor, Lee's Family Trailer. Stay right with us, folks. Some new stuff happening at Lee's Family for 2021. Like their huge show yard expansion for more units and plenty of parking. Over 500 additional units arriving, including Wildwood, Grand Design, Cougar, and Montanas. 150 motorhomes like Winnebago and Echo are arriving. Go see them on Route 302 in Wyndham and at Lee'sFamilyTrailer.com. The fifth wheel capital of New England. Love how it feels in your home on wheels from Lee's Family Trailer. What'd you say, John? I said I love that jingle. They do such a good job with it. <laughs> yeah. They do such a good job with it. And, um, you know, Chris, it, it brings me to another question. And, um, and it ties in what Terry Cooper talked about. Who's going to fix all this stuff down there? I mean, there's going to be a long line at the uh, service center or service department um, I, I'm guessing these people are get, they're going to lose units. I mean, some of them may not be salvageable, and some of them are going to be out of out of service for months because even if all the parts were available, they don't have the technicians. And even in regular days, they don't have the technicians to handle something like that. Would you Would you say that that's I'm pretty on with that? 
Well, it kind of depends. I mean, if it's just plumbing issues where you're dealing with frozen piping and replacing, you know, the PEX plumbing and fittings and things like that, uh, that's all pretty uh, ordinary stuff these days. Uh, most plumbers that I know are actually installing PEX in fixed buildings and that type of thing, the polybutylene, uh, cross-link polybutylene uh, plumbing. And so you can go to a regular home center and get the parts for it. So what I would say to people is, look, you know, if you can get a certified technician there to work on it and, and get it set, that's fine. Uh, if you have an RV down there, you know, make sure the water is off. And then when everything's thawed out, go ahead and, t and pressure test it and see if you have any leaks, anything like that. And uh, so regular plumbers can certainly jump in and, and help fix things uh, as you go along. So in these kind of uh, unique circumstances, uh, what if they haven't, can and, certainly be done. What if they haven't been really good about preventive maintenance and they're down there baking in the 80 degree sun for a couple of months and then all of a sudden it's minus 12 with a wind chill? How about the windows and the roofing and the caulking? Well, you certainly, you know, you want to keep on top of that stuff. And uh, so as they've had the snow and so forth, as it melts, uh, you know, one of the things you 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 end up with an RV when you have a snowfall and you have an RV that, that really hasn't been built or insulated for wintertime use. And even if it is, uh, if you have it particularly warm inside, the snow as it falls on the vehicle melts. And that's when you end up with uh, uh, water damming and and that type of thing and ice backup. Uh, and uh, so you may end up with some water damage. Don't know that. You know, you're going to have to look at it as time goes on. Right now, the temperatures are, are at, you know, aiming back towards the 60s for highs. So any snow that, you know, in Dallas, I was looking at the forecast. So anything that's uh, left on the ground or anything like that is going to disappear pretty quickly. Uh, in that area. And of course, that's going to move uh, further north as uh, time goes on. Uh, so you want to keep a good look on, uh, you know, at your coach. If you notice anything that uh, look like a leak or whatever, you're going to want to try to dry it out and then get it repaired and get uh, the coach sealed back up as uh, quickly as you can. Right. Hey, Chris, would you agree that <laughs> would you agree with me that this may be a classic case of a RV mobile tech guy who really knew his or her stuff, being able to head for Texas and uh, <laughs> being finding a bonanza down there. Well, there's no question about that. I spent most of my career in mobile service, and uh, uh, you know, I owned a, a, a company up here in New York and New England, and I did a lot of that. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, absolutely, it's times like these where mobile service technicians really. Uh, end up being super valuable, uh, especially if they're certified and they really know their stuff. Yep. Uh, they can get in and dig into these things and and uh, you know get them settled. So that's a, a big piece of this. Let's let's take one more look at uh, the winter weather down there with our friend Alan Warren. And let me uh, put. Let's tell people who Alan Warren is, Bob. No, you tell. Okay, well, let's do that. So Alan Warren has a radio, actually, a radio show and a show just like ours that runs uh, right after us. It's called RV, the RV Show USA. And we met him, where were we, at Elkhart or somewhere? Yellow Open House in the Forest River Pavilion. <laughs> okay, a few years ago. And uh, actually, we met him in, in D.C. as well. Right. Uh, no, in Louisville. Louisville. Also, where we met him for the first time. And we kind of have a you know, a um, friendship in that we both do the same thing. And in the RV biz, everybody knows everybody. So I called him on Wednesday and said, Alan, um, look, at, you're down there. Give us a firsthand, firsthand view. And he is a broadcaster and you'll hear his deep voice. And um, he even apologizes about what he looks like. We don't apologize because we look like this no matter what. And, and for those of you, for those of you old, the older, more mature people, if his voice sounds familiar, uh, he was the voice of Chevrolet for 20 or 30 years on their commercials. Mary Lou North must know him because he goes, everybody knows Alan Warren. Right. So, All right. Take Let's it away, see. Alan Warren. Thank you.
All right, hi, John and Bob. I hope that uh, y'all didn't send this bad weather down here to Texas. I know we've got a scheduled phone call here after a while. I'm not sure if uh, we're gonna have electricity or whatever, but yes, it's me, the wingman, down here in Central Texas at Big Chief RV Resort. I know I look pretty grungy. I've been here for a week and unable to uh, uh, make myself presentable. I've been a plumber, uh, an electrician, I've been a, uh, uh, I guess, a therapist trying to calm everybody down. It is a crazy situation here, as you can see behind me. It looks like the, it looks like where y'all are from. It looks like New England, but we're not used to this down here. There are no such things as uh, snow plows, no such thing as snow tires, probably no such thing as many drivers that should be out on the road either. Uh, it iced up. We had some snow the other day. I think this is day number four of it being uh, below freezing. It actually warmed up. I think right now it's about 15 degrees. The day before yesterday, I woke up three. And people up in New England, well, we do that all the time, but we don't do that ever here in Texas, never. And no one was ever uh, prepared for it. The electrical uh, utility companies, nobody was prepared for this. Um, so day before yesterday, it was three. Yesterday, uh, it got to two. So it was really bad. I'm gonna send some pictures along with this video, John, that uh, maybe this would be better to run on your show. And uh, Bob, you guys make the decision, you know, if you wanna show this video or you wanna call me on the phone, but I like, I prefer visuals if I can do them. Um, this is my little car right here that is iced up. It wasn't iced up last night until the snowstorm, ice storm, whatever you want to call it, came in. But if you look right here, right here, this solid sheet of ice, there's, I'm, I will break my car door if I try to get in. We had, uh, and my truck over here, uh, it's going to be the same way. It's just ice. It's not snow. This is the worst thing ever right here. Just ice. And I show you this because of, we have had campers that are here that got trapped in their RV. Can't get out because of that. Um, we had a guy the other day come up here. He's a, uh, he's a Marine and he is a, <laughs> he's a bad dude, smart dude, but he brought a torch up. It's called a pear burner. And he literally, he, he, he could not get in his RV um, to prepare it for this kind of weather because of the thick ice. So he took this torch to the RV to melt the ice enough. And I know that that's not safe, but uh, the guy was, you know, he's not a trained firefighter, but it, it's his decision. And it was the only way, really, the only way that he could get in. Uh, I have taken a number of pictures down at the lakefront. We're on a, a beautiful lake called Lake Buchanan in Central Texas. And the pictures uh, out here are stunning. I think we'll never see this again. At least I hope that we don't see this again. And uh, I have told everybody that has got a scheduled camping trip. I'm sorry I'm shaking so much, too. I'm just freezing cold. People that have a scheduled trip with us this weekend, we're calling them. Many have said, well, we're coming anyway. It'll be fun. It will not be fun. I promise you will be miserable if you come and stay with us this weekend, no matter what we do to make you happy. You will not be happy. And um, and then you'll reflect it on us. So we're doing everything we can. We'll extend you a credit, blah, 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 blah. But please don't come this weekend. I would, I would encourage everybody to stay at home and be safe. Get off the roads, especially if you're down here in Texas. This ice storm that came in last night was like rubbing up. Uh, what do they say, salt in a wound, because it made a bad situation even badder. I know there's no such word, but I like it. it made a bad situation badder. So that's kind of an update right now. I'm going to send you, like I said, some pictures. You can look at them. They're pretty self-explanatory. We've had frozen pipes, uh, and miraculously, we have been some of the lucky ones. The people that have been trying to get propane, and there's a lot of them, the line was at least two hours long at least two hours long. It was like a traffic jam uh, at rush hour in a major city. The line just went on and on and on of cars and trucks waiting to fill up their you know, 30 pound tank or their 40 pound, whatever they get, they, they're trying to get propane. So um, it, it is scary. It, it, it went from adventurous, I like being scared, kind of, uh, to a kind of adventurous scared, if you know what I'm talking about. But this is just scary right here because you don't know. Uh, plants, pets, pipes, um, animals. You know, we drove yesterday to try to get some propane and we saw a couple of cows that were underneath trees and really thick brush. It's this kind of weather down here that wildlife 
Livestock is, is in trouble too, but wildlife uh, is not used to this. We don't have down here as a, a deer or a possum or whatever. We don't have the pet fat reserves that people have or the animals have up north. And so my prediction is we're gonna have a catastrophic die off of a lot of wildlife. I also think we're gonna be seeing some uh, increased prices at the grocery store because the, the farmers and ranchers can't feed and water their animals. That's gonna be reflected in higher grocery prices. So sorry for going on and on guys. Y'all have a great show. I wish I could be on with you, but I can't promise the internet would be working. I am Alan Warren, the RV wingman from Big Chief RV Resort. Looks like the North Pole, but it really is Central Texas. Y'all take care. Like I said, have a great show. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. Did you see that ice? Sure. <laughs> that, you know what? And we get one of those storms, I don't know, every other, every other year or so where, you know, the, the ice is crusted mm -hmm. on your doors. And you really have to hit the door to, uh, to get in about, you know, maybe quarter of an inch thick but we're used to it we have they probably don't even have ice scrapers or snow brooms down there probably not no. now <clears throat> also notice that the spokesman for chevrolet now drives a nissan and a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see the truck i thought the truck was a ram truck no it's a no. titan 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 nissan okay. titan okay. <laughs> oh, they must i wonder if it's the diesel <laughs> they must not have paid me. So, Chris, having been a former firefighter, I, I suppose you would probably not recommend taking a uh, torch RV. No. You know what? If you can get hot water on it or something like that or a de-icer fluid, that's certainly a lot safer. Uh, RVs, you know, are not made of the most uh, uh, fire-resistive material. So, you know, you're, you're really taking a lot of uh, risk, uh, you know, by doing that. And, uh, you know, in, and when you get into these cold situations, of course, there's a lot of other safety things that you need to look at. Uh, we can talk about carbon monoxide and making sure that all your safety detectors and things like that are all up to snuff. Um, and I think a lot of people now after this event are going to make sure uh, that all their safety systems and all their safety gear in their RVs is up to date. Another job for a mobile spec, uh, mobile tech. Call your call your mobile tech and have it checked out before you. I mean, the worst thing you do is go through a winter like this, especially down south, and then go camping to find out that half your systems don't work. Well, right, exactly, and uh, so you need to make sure things are are up to snuff. And if you have a seasonal unit or something down in that section of the country. Uh, and you didn't winterize because normally you don't have to, uh, you know, be very careful when you go back to your unit and you turn water back on and that type of thing. Uh, I've uh, fixed a lot of units over the years where people, you know, would return to the unit uh, and turn the water on and go and enjoy adult beverage. And then uh, next thing you know, there's water running out the door. Uh, you know, that can be a really, you know, difficult situation. So. So, Chris, uh, you've been kind enough to join us tonight. Give a little plug for the magazine and how people can get it and the fact that it is off, obviously a technical bend to it, but go ahead and do your own commercial. All right. Well, uh, RV Enthusiast and RVEnthusiast.com is our website. And uh, so this is a new magazine uh, that we're going to be putting out monthly. It's an electronic magazine, uh, but uh, we lay it out and we're in a vertical format, which is great. It really makes it nice to look at on any device. And what we're doing is we're filling a little bit of uh, a need in the industry for good technical, sound technical uh, information. Our team includes Bob Livingston, Chris Hemer, myself, Bruce Hampson, Jim Mack, uh, uh, Bruce uh, Smith, among others, uh, uh, Mike Sokol. And uh, so we've got a really good situation going on there. Chris, I, I, have, to set, I, have, to re I have to set the record straight. <laughs> it was alluded to the other day. Okay that Livingston might be 100 years old. And I came to his defense and said that Bob Livingston is not 100 years old. We were referring to the collective years of experience of your top names on your masthead. And uh, another person on screen with us right now, I'm not going to say names, but he's wearing the same clothes as me, <laughs> alluded to the fact that your colleague may be approaching is the century mark. Uh, he is not. Uh, well, he's closer to it than I am. I'm, I, I'm the youngest in the, oh. in the <laughs> team. I will say that. Uh, 
so it, it, and I won't say that there isn't the occasional uh, joke that goes along, uh, you know, those lines. Although uh, the, somebody that you've mentioned uh, recently, <clears throat> Bob Livingston has a mullet and whatnot. But, uh, you know, he's enjoying his, uh, he and Lynn enjoy their time uh, living full time in their uh, grand design fifth wheel. And we'll be heading up this way. They're going to be up here this uh, summer, actually. Great. So we're we're looking forward to that. But, uh, you know, he joined uh, the Affinity Group and Good Sam and, and, and uh, Motorhome and Trail Life in 1971. Mm. And uh, so he's been with that, with uh, the industry a very long time and uh, owned a, an RV dealership for a time, wrote, uh, you know, of course, his uh, technical manual, which some of us in the industry used as our first textbook. Yeah, you know, when we got into the world. What, uh, what is yeah, not camping world? It wasn't camping world then. What was that, Bob? What was the, uh, have you guys ever added up the years of experience of your collective team? Maybe <sighs> probably closer to 200. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I say, I say that nice. Here's the thing. It, it's he added a couple, come on, so, Pedro, he added a couple more people to the team. I know, I know it. Work. I know. Well, here, let so me I, look a day over 100, Bob. I don't care what you yeah. <laughs> it, It's funny because, uh, you know, Suicide Let's Who Heads Up uh, Advertising for us was the most senior employee in the whole company when she retired this past winter. Uh, you know, and so she had been with the magazines forever. She was in a, on a, we found a 1980, I'm going to say 1982 magazine cover that she was on, uh, at trailer life. It was either trailer life or motorhome. I don't remember now. I think it was trailer life, but, uh, uh, you know, and then Bob certainly been there a long time. Bruce Hampson was with the company, uh, way back then he was editor of motorhome for a time. He's been with a lot of car mags. And of course, as we know, RV business, Chris Hemer was my predecessor as tech editor, but he's been with the company for a long, long time and been with these magazines for a long time. So yeah, we do have, have some, some years in it and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good. It helps us, uh, bring that professional level of, of information to our readers. And that's what we want to do. It, it kind of, uh, you know, separates us out uh, a little bit. And that's, we want to try to give people the best information we can. Let's put it that way. We want to thank you so much for taking time from your Anytime, Saturday. brother, anytime. Only because of the fact that, you know what, in, when we're really, we're really in the news business, no matter which way you place it. And mm -hmm. one thing about our viewers is that they share that common bond and they share that um, because they're our viewers, they have that capability to go various places and, you know, maybe so many of the people that might not be in Texas now saying, you know what? I was in Texas this time last year when we were running from COVID. We were running from sure. Texas, Texas to Florida to get away from uh, restrictions. And now they look, you know, there'll be more. RVers will be taking a lot more home video, if you will, in the next few months and putting it on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be devastating. My sister and her husband are full-time RVers in their Montana fifth wheel. They're in California now. They spend a decent amount of time in Texas and Arizona on their way up there. And so fortunately, they moved past this before it hit. But, you know, the places they were staying have been hit by this. And it's a it's a tough situation for sure. So, uh, you know, it's it's starting to warm up. The, uh, uh, the conditions down there are starting to improve, fortunately. Um, and there's going to be a fair amount of cleanup and recovery to do, but, uh, you know, everybody will, we're our viewers. We'll get through it for sure. All right. Great. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to close it out. Chris, thank you again. Uh, My pleasure. And hit the closing commercial and thank you everybody for joining us on the Saturday night special. See you Wednesday night. Awesome. Thanks guys. This edition of RVing in New England was brought to you by Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service, one of America's fastest growing RV dealerships and was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram.